So I've been asked to uh, kind of go through and show um, how to get these spacing of these little tabs uh, here so that if I increase this length of this part, then they will space evenly um, throughout it. So see if I can do this uh, a couple different ways here. So go down into this part here. This is our extrusion. So go into our sketch. Um, so this one is named Rigel Durflange. So I'll speak in a different language, but that's no problem. So that's the parameter that we're looking for. So if we actually go into our parameter list, um, that's it. So I'm going to copy that real quick. And so if we finish our sketch, come back into our main part. So if we go into our parameters up here, or if you wanted to get to them through the Manage tab, um, they're right here as well. So these are some of the, click on there or there, either one. Um, so you'll see that here's all of our parameters that we have. What you can do is go to this little link right here, and then um, these are all of our parts. So the other one was Rigel, that was the part that we're looking at. So if we actually open this in our linked, it'll say here's all of our parameters that we have. So if we want all of them, we can just click right here, and it'll take all of them like that. Or we can just the Rigel or flange. So in this instance, um, I'm just going to do this one and bring that in. So now we have a user parameters that's linked, um, and there we are. So if I wanted to do, um, how did I set this up? Add a numeric parameter. So we're going to call this uh, Rigel Spacing. And then we're going to make this one a unitless constraint, just so it gives us a rounded number. And then we are going to take uh, this dimension, and we're going to round it to the value that we put inside of it, and then we'll have Rigel, how do we spell that? That's why I copied it. And then we're going to divide that by the number of uh, this, D66, which is the component length. So I'll get to that in just a sec. So you'll see that we have a distance that we brought in from another part. Divide that by the actual spacing of the uh, pattern, and then round it up to the nearest hole. So if we took off the round, um, it would just be 10.9. So once we round it, or you can do ceiling. So if we wanted to always round up, then it would go up. Or if we put floor, it would go down. So let's just do ceiling. Um, so now we have that part. If we find our pattern here, which is up there, component pattern, and uh, this spacing is going to be our Rigel spacing. Now, if you didn't know what that was named, you could come in and list your parameters, and there it is right there. I'll try that again. So, list parameters, Rigel spacing. All right, and that's our distance, which is the D66. So, if we put space equals there, when we come back in, it'll rename our D66 into space, and it'll automatically update our name here. So we can set our parameters to actually be named so we can find them later. So that way, all of our spacing is here. Now let's do something for fun and uh, change this value. So we have our Rigel, whatever that is. Let's change that to 14,000. And this updates. So when we come back in, now we see that it updates our pattern. So that way, no matter what distance you have, so let's come back into here, change this to 13. So that's going to come back down. 
Um, so I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense of how to use parameters and how to link things. Um, there's other different ways you can do it. You could use a derived part um, and dialogic and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, you can add your form into here and then if you wanted to you know, look at all this stuff, you could pull that up and it would tell you, okay, here's the length and here's how many spaces it is. Um, you could say, I have my space on here. Okay, so let's say we wanted to make our space 900. So it'll automatically change the space and update however many it is based on however many you got. So you can add however many you want and you can set it up like that. 